Simpsons not do that beforehand? Well, actually, that's just general rule, right? Simpsons um, did it. <laughs> yeah, probably, right? Like, it's a good guess. <laughs> I'm not sure, though. All right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. This time, we got the qualifying match underway. Two players playing for that spot, neither of which are the front runners from Europe, as we've seen before. But both players are uh, pretty good up-and-comers, and I'm uh, very interested to see if either of them, which of them, I should say, make it through, because one of them will obviously make it through as it's a qualifying round. Uh, loser's bracket, however, so only one of these two will get through. Spawning here on the top right side of Dusk Towers is going to be the blue Protoss Realmer. In the bottom left, as the pink Zerg, he is Raynor. And they're doing all right. So for clarity, because we have got some of this being brought up in chat, um, Goblin did not forfeit, which is why we did not advance um, No Regret through to play against Raumer. He was disqualified because he did not show up, like, at all. We just, you know, he disappeared. Yeah, it's two different, two different situations. Um, unfortunately, it might have been the case of him not knowing, though, as we have tried to ask people that if they're not going to play the loser's bracket, if they would just let Le the admin know. <sighs> well, luckily, we didn't have to wait too long. I mean, we did start setting smaller timers for walkovers, because I think we used to have, like, 20, 25 minutes or something, just because we really wanted to be super lenient, but people... Yeah. Kept just kind of abusing that, and uh, there was a recent incident that's not worth bringing up on stream that really made us realize we have to make that shorter. So, about yes. ten about ten minutes, I think, is fair. And if players go AFK, like we're obviously willing to accommodate too. If someone's like, "Look, um, I know my match isn't starting for another half hour. I got to go to the bathroom or something. I'm having the worst indigestion of my life. You know, <laughs> I'll be late maybe, but I'll be here. Like that's fine. We have no problem extending a little bit. But there's no communication from Goblin on this." Yeah. yeah, too bad. He had some fun games. But now we have Rainer versus Realmer, and uh, it's a PVZ on Dusk Towers, so what you want to talk about this time? More jelly uh, how, how I wish there was going to be oracles on mass, even though I know there <laughs> won't be. <laughs> Just slip Realmer 20. Yeah, well, okay, that's A, it, completely not cool because it's, like, illegal and bribing and, like, a million other things that are wrong right, with that statement. Right, A, that's definitely A, yeah. But, but, you know, the other stuff, too. <laughs> <laughs> no. I wonder, <clears throat> actually. So we all know about crazy. Like I'm not talking about anything StarCraft related, even. But like in baseball and stuff. Like there's a history of people throwing games and like thousands of hundreds of dollars for this, right? I wonder what the least money paid for the biggest result would be. Like who fucked up and didn't get paid for it properly, right? Like did you throw the World Series but only got a hundred bucks for it when you should have gotten a hundred thousand? Like. <laughs> Like, like, I wonder We're if they're... enough to do that. Well, that's what I'm saying. There are probably people out there who are stupid. Let's be honest. Human beings by nature are stupid. So I'm sure there's at least been an instance of that. Maybe not, like, that low. But that's what I'm saying. Like, what's the lowest somebody's been that ridiculous to throw something over? I, like, I oh, you're, 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 like, in that horse race circuit. And, I don't know, you drug your own horse. And you, know, you misread the fine prints. So you're only getting 50 sometimes... bucks, not 500. 5, people will uh compare like casting to like real sports casting and they'll compare like esports drama to real sports drama or like professionalism versus professionalism right and i'm just sitting here comparing starcraft 2 esports drama to brood war esports drama like <laughs> i don't know why you're asking me this question stay within your wheelhouse Rifkin. got it <laughs> maybe chat's got you back like i am so surprised sometimes how many people like, not that they watch sports, right? Like, I'm not, like, stereotyping everyone because sometimes sports are fun to watch. But some people are actually, like, super invested in, like, commentary on sports, which I feel is, like, the last thing you get into. But maybe I'm wrong. I was thinking you get into the teams first because you can root Yo, your I, hometown team. and then. I feel like that's probably true if you grew up with something. But if I'm listening to, like, if, if there was an artosis and tasteless tier of caster for a hockey game, I feel like I'd be so much mm -hmm. more invested in a hockey okay. game. Instead, it's, like... Old guy just kind of like, passes the puck up to Kessler, Sadin takes it from him, checks on the back end. And like I'm like, I don't know what he's saying. I don't know what he's really talking about. There's a there's a puck on the ice. And this guy's just making me tired and bored. <laughs> and I don't want to listen to him. Yeah, I guess I get that. Because I watch other esports that I don't know anything about. Sometimes I actually really like the caster. So, yeah, uh, well. Uh, so, yeah, I've actually... As, uh... I guess, uh, hey guys, can you just shut up and cast the game? No, it's our channel. I'll deal with it. Uh, I was going to say, I've actually seen a couple of CSGO casts where I didn't really know what was going on, but I watched it just because the casters were great. Like, the commentary was amazing. Yep. Yeah, for sure. Um, 
But we did bring all of this up because Dust Towers usually gets to three base versus four, and then eventually four versus five. So we, here we have our first set of um, first little bit of action as the suicide of adepts commences. This is like a, a it, rite of passage in PVZ. It feels it really is how Realmar controls these. Though. Like for example, if he puts them all in one base, I feel this is not going to do so well. If, he, if he's good enough to split them into two or three different bases and keep those adepts constantly transferring around and keep the Zerg player guessing. You know, then Rainer maybe is in for some trouble. Uh, he takes his front line pretty easily and deals with those mm. links, but it's roaches that are on the way. Yeah, but, you know, roaches have a surprisingly hard time dealing with adepts. Uh, as in, like, catching them and then tearing them down quick enough. Uh, at least links stop them in their place and maybe get the drones to leave. So, uh, roaches pop in the natural, but not quite in the main. So a couple more drones going on in the main. Yeah, there goes the are pretty shade. good. Gonna try and get to the third base, too, now. Behind this, getting a third base, two robos. Makes oh, sense. Oh, and that's why the drones just ran to as well. Not safe. Lings look like they're gonna hold this. Eleven drones okay. die. Realmer is up in workers. They're on uh, coming up on even bases. I'd say that this wasn't the most cost-effective engagement for him, but it was good enough to warrant the damage. Not to mention a lot of mining loss through tra constantly transferring around. In fact, look at that blue spike on the income graph. Like right around here is when the adepts hit, guys. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So the graphs can be really, really helpful sometimes. Uh, the only worrying thing is that you did just give away most of your army, so replenishing that in time can sometimes be scary if they just send the, the units that they got across the map, which is what Rainer's doing. Uh, he's, you know, taking some time and work Ravagers, but he's still getting a lot of lings to help uh, help with this. Are queens coming with this? I think they're just going to spread more creep. It looks a little silly. But uh, that's where our and Overtures come in. That's where a Void Ray, while it might not do well against the Ravagers, is at least some extra damage at a point where you don't have the biggest army. Quids are actually going for this, by the way. Huh. huh. <laughs> I love I love this. Figure yourself if you can. I are genius, and he spells genius like, <laughs> really wrong. That's I amazing. am so smart. I am so smart. S-M-A-R-T. -E. I mean, S-M-A-R-T. <laughs> you, you really screwed it up. Like <laughs> S-M-A-T is supposed to S-M-R-T? Like, yeah. That's, I really screwed it up. Well, that's the homework quote. S I am so smart, SMRT. Are you not quoting The Simpsons here? What are we going with? I just thought it was SMAT. No, dude. I'm pretty I'm sure. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I actually feel like I, I don't know anymore. You've badly. made me. You've made me unconfident in this topic <laughs> that I thought I knew. All right, the attack does come down. Matter. That's a lot of roaches, or sorry, ravages. Excuse me. So a lot of corrosive biles. The void ray is definitely not something that's going to hold alone. And ooh. Well, not if it goes down immediately like that. Rainer hits that really hard. There's some Immortals in the back end, but it's not Roaches, it's Ravagers and Lings. So the Immortals, they've got good generic damage, and they get so hits thanks to their barrier, but as we see, they're not exactly cleaning this up super smoothly. Again, taking another hit, coming down. Curse of Bile, 60 a shot, and that's something you can hit. And yeah. Rainer's going to start trying to disengage off this, but the Queens are too slow off of Creep. <laughs> yeah. The oh. in this case, oh, the centuries. The Ghost of Files really is so good. Oh, that's um, it's really fucking loud. With the Queens being um, uh, crowd controlled, the Voidray actually would have helped against the Ravagers. It would have been, you know, free damage until the Ghost of Bile hit. I just didn't expect it to hit so, so soon. Like, that thing went down really damn quick. But now it's uh, Realmer's turn to try and, and change things around here. He's got a War Prism on the way, he's bringing his Mothership Core. Uh, did go double robo, so he's still producing immortals. I guess he's just chasing whatever he can. Yeah. Not too sure he wants to go full on to creep because I don't think he has any observers around. No, he does not. He doesn't oh. know what is waiting for him. And okay, he's gonna push back. So apparently, uh, according to JTDC, donates five dollars and says, "Rifkin, the Black Sox scandal had players throw the World Series in 1919 for one thousand five hundred dollars." I don't know if that's true, but that's kind of crazy <laughs> if that's the case. But I guess in 1919, though, like. That was a lot more money back then. 1500 yeah. bucks now is not a lot of money in comparison. It's like Canadian dollars. Wow. Can you just fuck off? I am really offended at my country's currency. For I'm offended reason. that my country is doing so poorly and that you keep reminding me about it on the regular. <laughs> your country is doing fine, just not your money. Oh, okay. Because, you know, that's such a definitive... Okay, I'm not... Nope. <laughs> I'm not taking this bait. Uh, <laughs> that's a lot of immortals. Again, they can take hits thanks to their barrier ability, but the second that goes on cooldown, they're just as squishy as anything else. Yeah. Uh, clearing up creep is certainly worthwhile, and while the army's clearing up creep, there's an attack happening in the main base. I mean, you could use this to reinforce a main push, but I think the harassments and just, you know, 
getting his fourth base up is definitely a safer choice. He sees the composition as well. Of course, Hydras are not something you, would, you wouldn't expect, but uh, maybe he could get eyes on whether the Lurker Den is already done, uh, which he just barely didn't. It's still a Hydralist Den. And his army is going to go home. Ooh, we might have Disruptor who's being added in here, the Robotics Bay. Oh, waiting to see if more comes in. I see, uh, could warp in and go for more depths? Maybe just waiting for Rainer to hopefully stop paying attention. Paying attention. I will say this, though, for Realmer. He is, despite the fact that he's continued to advance his tech, he is still kind of teeter tottering that line of all in. Like, there's no weapon upgrades coming up behind this, there's no air transition. It is all ground versus ground, and Rainer has been slowly getting upgrades while this goes on. So I feel like if it stays on these similar compositions for long enough, Rainer will still look a lot better later on. Hmm. Well, the War Prism still living is definitely annoying. Uh, Realmer getting up to a fourth base and Raynor not getting onto a fifth base could also be concerning as, you know, maxed out, unless the Zerg can get to Broodlords. I feel like the Protoss army is scarier, but it is about, you know, getting to Broodlords sometimes. The Invitation Pit does come down now, so that's a long ways off, as well as the Spire. I wonder if this is going to be... A chance for Rummer to actually be offensive and take a fight before Broodlords are out? Broodlords. Broodlords are out? <laughs> Booty Lords. Broodlords. Broodlords. I gotta, gotta be scared of my Broodlords. Okay, apparently I'm now casting with a little Babby Grub. It's a Babby. Oh. <clears throat> so? I, like, I like the Lurkers actually a lot more, but as we've seen consistently... Large immortal counts are really good at dispatching lurkers, so they'll have their position in this game. I am looking more keenly towards the potential broodlords, though, because between immortals and disruptors, I don't think lurkers are going to cut it for Rainer here. Let's see. Um, oh yeah, Tempest potentially on the way. The abusing abusing the dust towers part of uh, dusk towers is annoying, but it looks like Rainer's that doesn't want to stay up on that tower will retreat. Romer might catch him on the backside here, and actually he is going to force an engagement. Ooh, while this goes on, the Romer also sneaks a bunch of adepts into the mineral lines of Raynor, so Raynor, who might be too distracted to deal with this, is gonna bleed out probably like 16 drones, Ooh. plus Disruptor hit big. Words Ooh. good, and just, oh, actually that recall <laughs> was good. Sorry, I was getting a little bit silly there, but that was actually a great recall. Saves the yes. army, kills so much on the other side of the map. Adepts going down, and uh, or not going down, excuse me, the queen goes down, and 1924 workers killed with this? This was a great distraction out of Realmer in the middle, and a huge hit on Raynor's economy in the back end. Yeah, now Realmer has a bank and is still maxed out, where Raynor is not maxed out, and has really not a lot of bank, um, you know, quite a bit of gas, but still not up to that hive either. There it starts now, so it's going to be a long time until he has Broodlords, and I think he kind of needs them. Now Realmer is in position to kind of choose the battle where he's going to take it. He's going to choose to take it off to the fourth, where he can maybe retreat back into that choke. It is a nice concave, that's also where the force filter to help out. Alright, recalls again. Just gonna retreat. I, I mean, <laughs> who is it? Uh, the, someone used to, uh, Noni. Noni was really annoying when you would watch him play because he would he would constantly do these recall tactics, right? Like he'd hit you, he'd do a little bit of damage and recall. Yeah. Same thing over and over and over again. Like, can't touch me, can't touch me. So, I mean, it's not like this is a bad thing out of out of Realmore. And in fact, if he keeps doing this and can get more damage each time, <laughs> it's importantly going to put Raynor on tilt, right? But uh, all of this, of course, is just buying some time, getting... Getting things going, and I mean, with uh, Tempest following this up, he's going to have that range he wants of force fights, which is really important. The massive range of the Tempest is, of course, far more valuable than any amount of damage it does or health it has. It just forces Rainer to either back away or pick a fight. Mm -hmm. Receiving incoming transmission. JTDC, um, once again with that donation, because with $5 <clears throat> and says relative value of currencies is only really important when dealing with imports and exports. A weak dollar, quote unquote, means that your currency tends to support more exports. A quote unquote strong dollar tends to words imports. Man, what the? Are you like a, are you like a money man, JTDC? What the fuck? Sports fan, money man. He's got too many big words and he knows too much about investing. I don't like it. <laughs> I don't trust him anymore. Are you from Wall Maybe Street? Maybe you should make friends with this guy. No, I think he's from Wall Street. I don't trust him. He does coke all the time. Must be. <laughs> uh, the fifth base is under attack here from Romer by a Gets ton a of roaches, but he just ends up canceling. So um, not too big of a deal as, again, his bank is looking pretty good. The fact that his Tempests are already out and about, like a two is not that high of a count, but still if they're already out is um, 
quite nice, you know, as opposed to getting caught off guard by Broodlords coming out a lot faster to actually say that Raynor, I don't want to say he made a mistake, but it's possible he could have accelerated to Broodlords much faster and maybe caught Romer off guard, but Romer has been pushing on a creep. He's uh, obviously used these recalls to nice effect, and it is going to get to that late, late game with Broodlords. Corruptor versus Storm, Archon, and Tempest, mostly. Of course, you still have a ground army to deal with, but it's kind of what it usually comes down to. I like Realmer's position. Oh, wow. Despite having so few upgrades this game. Yeah, I was about to say, like, how do we not notice he hasn't had any upgrades? How did I not well, notice he hasn't I mean, had any upgrades? I'm, I'm brought it out, but, you know. Whatever. I, I must have missed it, uh... But I just, I, I can't believe that he has, like, zero upgrades. And he's getting it air of, upgrades before anything else, too. It kind of works, though, because if you think about it, Disruptors don't require upgrades for their damage to increase. Tempest damage is irrelevant, as we talked about before. It's just nice to have. And Storm is going to be spell damage. So majority of what Realmer has, I, I would say he doesn't need upgrades. Obviously, upgrades are better, right? Like, no one's going to argue ever against upgrades. But if you're going all spells versus somebody who has no spells but pure upgrades... That's like physical damage versus magical damage. Like it doesn't matter. You're both doing a lot of damage. <laughs> uh, actually, gonna see the Broodlord's making here. Goes for the disruptor shots all over the army. Good disruptor shots, but he did use all of them, so that cooldown no longer there. War Prism being driven back by two well placed spore crawlers. Stalker still denying some mining here on the left side. There's a lurker, of course, to make sure that doesn't get uh, too much more done. But Rainer in the back foot in a lot of different ways, and I'd say most importantly is his bank right now. Doesn't have a lot of money to work with, and Realmer, on the other hand, is maxed yeah. out, and he's still got a bank growing. He's probably got yeah, JTDC as his money man. <laughs> they both used up most of the bank, but yeah, Realmer's is growing much faster yet again, and uh, he's looking better and better in this game. Was it like JTDC Wentworth or something like that? <laughs> it just sounds like a bank name. No, no, that's not. <laughs> oh my god, but now I have to go Google it. Wentworth. I don't know. I know uh, what you're talking about, though. What the right? Hell? Like, that sounds familiar. That sounds like I'm saying words that are real. Not convinced JD. that I am. Yeah, JD Wentworth. JD. Okay, J so. JG. 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 Well, it Wentworth. sounds like JTDC. There we go. Yeah, yeah, it's that stupid commercial where they're all singing all the time. <laughs> oh, God. Why would you bring that up? Because uh, now I've apparently probably put the head song stuck in the heads of at least a couple of people tuning in. Oh, My bad, guys. My bad. Uh, Warpin's coming back towards the main. Just one, because he's actually kind of maxed out in supply. <laughs> this is the weakest attack because he's got too much army. Mm. But this actually distracts pretty much everything. Raynor way overreacting to this Warp Prism. Abandons two Broodlords. Those are going to go down. The base is going to fall. This was a very important mining base to Raynor. Uh, Disruptor's coming in. Storm's oh, going to blank it. The Corruptors. Oh, he's got to land crap. a couple more, though. The Storm. Uh, it was scarier How than it was, but without more Storms... These corruptors are the doing Archons. pretty well. Oh, here we go. Archons yeah. in there. The Archon's attack is a storm. The Tempest, of course, not focusing on the Broodlords. I'm a bit surprised. I thought he would have tried to focus on the Broodlords. Uh, lurkers on the backside are helping deal with the ground, and these Broodlings are proving to be a little bit problematic. Hey, ha, ha, ha. Uh, the Archons are still alive, and the Disruptors are going to be able to take care of the... are going to try and take care of the Lurkers. So, GG. And then Rainer does GG. Yep. Nicely done by Romer. Without upgrades. 